Hi, my name is Charlie Mifsud, Priority Weeds Coordinator with New South Wales Department of Primary Industries on the North Coast of New South Wales. Floods are a common occurrence on the New South Wales North Coast and are a method in which weeds are spread. These might be obvious weeds such as the waterweed water hyacinth, but also less obvious terrestrial weeds such as tropical soda apple or parthenium weed. The following video presented in collaboration with local council weed officers from the North Coast can help you identify some weeds of high priority that can be spread during flood events. If you see a plant that you suspect is a weed growing on your property that was not there prior to a flood, it is recommended that you report it to your local council weeds officer or to New South Wales DPI through weeds at dpi.nsw.gov.au. Your local council weeds officer can provide advice on identification and management of weeds. Other sources of information on weeds is through New South Wales WeedWise. Remember, early detection of a new weed infestation is critical in controlling the spread and enhancing your chances of eradication. I'm Ashley Donche, I'm the Invasive Plants Officer of Bellingen Shire Council. So, what we've got here is the Coxburgh Coral Tree. It's an invasive plant in our region. So particularly in um, Bellingen Shire, we're in the exclusion zone, which means it needs to be eradicated. Some of the key features of this plant, it's covered in these tiny thorns, which you won't be able to pick up from there, but little rose thorns all down the stems, on the leaves, and on the branches and the trunk as well. So the leaves will always be in sets of three, and they're hairless leaves. And we don't have any flowers on this one, Got myself again. They're scarlet red. So the seed pods on these plants. Bring some back here. They're quite, they can be quite long. And they're bulbous around the seeds. Now this plant will reproduce from seeds, but also from stem fragments. So it's a particular risk on our waterways where small cuttings can break off and travel down our travel down the river, so especially here in Bellingen, from up Darkwood, we see quite a lot come down and they'll establish in the river banks and from there they can be quite hard to control. It's a not particular hard, particularly hardy root system and so when they break down they take the bank with them. Uh, so they also upset the nutrient balance because they're a deciduous tree. What we've got here is kidney leaf mud plantain. It's an invasive species of quite a high priority in our region. It has quite a low distribution, though what it does is it'll take over waterways, smothering out um, space for other plants to grow and pushing out aquatic life as well. It grows from stem fragments and also from seed and it grows very quickly. This species has kidney shaped leaves. They're bright green, glossy, when they're young, they start out quite, quite slender and more upright. And as they grow, they'll open up um, to about five centimetres in width. So none of these plants are in flower at the moment, but when they are in flower, they've got small white to mauve flowers. This plant spreads very readily in floods as it's picked up by floodwaters and break apart. And even a small fragment can infest, infest a new waterway very quickly. There's a number of ways to get rid of this plant. So best to consult with your invasive plants officer of your local council. They can advise on the best kind of chemicals to use, uh, which are approved for waterway use. Manure removal is a good way to go about getting rid of this plant. It is a long process and you need regular follow-up. Getting in there with a rake or an excavator, pulling it up and getting it out of a flood area. You do need to keep coming back to check because it will grow back from small cuttings. So it's an ongoing process to control this weed. G'day, I'm Keegan from Nambucca Valley Council. Today I was going to show you some salvinia. Um, this is a free-floating water plant which grows on any still water body, be it dams, wetlands or rivers. It has these amazing little waxy hairs that cover the leaves which actually displace any water that lands on it, hence makes it float quite easily. It's got these long 
tendril-like roots that come down from the leaf, from the stems, and little nodes that form new plants as it spreads. It can multiply that rapidly on a nutrient-rich water body that it can double its surface area in one day. And as you can see behind me, it can completely cover a dam and make the water unusable to stock and other aquatic life. Salvinia can be removed from a water body in many different ways. Physical removal with an excavator or even nets in small infestation areas. Um, managing the water quality, so Salvinia thrives in nutrient rich water and if it can be managed it will significantly reduce its growth. Biocontrol through a commonly known um, organism called the Salvinia weevil and in some circumstances chemical control is permitted on Salvinia. So this plant is Parthenium weed, also known as Santa Maria feverfew. It can grow up to 1.5 metres tall. It's an annual herb and has a deeply lobed leaf, which looks like more than one leaf, but it's one big leaf with lots of large fingers. Parthenium weed is an extremely high risk species to New South Wales agriculture. It's what DPI class as prohibited matter under the Biosecurity Act. Parthenium weed can cause severe dermatitis and allergic reactions in both ruminant animals and humans. Ruminant animals can suffer severe kidney damage if exposed to this through excessive grazing and it can even cause death in young cattle. So this plant is predominantly spread from cropping areas in central Queensland into New South Wales through machinery, or grain or fodder. If you think you have Parthenium weed on your property, please contact your local weeds officer or the New South Wales Department of Primary Industries Biosecurity Hotline as control of this plant is critical not only for your place but the whole of New South Wales. Hi, I'm Matt Bell, Biosecurity Officer with Port Macquarie Hastings Council. Uh, today we're going to be looking at one of our priority weeds which is groundsel bush. So this is groundsel bush. Uh, as you can see it's a woody shrub. It can grow a little bit taller than this uh, but this is quite typical. Um, groundsel bush is characterised um, by these small leaves um, to three or four centimetres with distinctly notched tips. Um, it's quite firm to touch. Groundsel bush flowers in early May, so this one would have just finished. Um, it has separate male and female plants, both with white or cream fluffy flowers uh, that spread very quickly in the wind. Um, groundsel bush inhabits coastal areas, um, particularly low-lying and swampy country. Uh, it is very tolerant of salinity um, and can rapidly take over roadsides and degraded pastures. Um, groundsel bush will cause cattle to lose condition if they graze on it uh, too much. You can get rid of groundsel bush uh, by ripping it out if the ground is soft enough um, when plants are small or you can cut and poison it, uh, the stump. Uh, or you can spray uh, groundsel bush with uh, any of the herbicides that are recommended in weed wise. Water stargrass is an aquatic weed which mainly grows underwater with long stems that uh, trail up near the surface or it can grow uh, above the surface in the mud next to the creek. Water star grass has short leaves, uh, short soft leaves around 50 millimetres long and up to 7 millimetres wide that grow around the stem uh, in a bit of a rosette. 
Uh, it's obviously it's soft and trails in the water. Uh, and then when it comes to the surface, it can produce a small white star-shaped flower uh, with a bit of a mauve centre. Uh, it will only grow in fresh water, but it will grow quite prolifically and outcompete native water plants. Uh, it will choke out all plants in the waterway, uh, reducing habitat for fish and other creatures um, and reducing levels of dissolved oxygen in the water. Uh, water star grass is so rare uh, it's very important to report any suspected sightings of water star grass to your local weeds officer and they can provide specific advice and assistance on getting rid of it if it is water star grass. Hi, I'm Jack. I'm from a weeds officer from Kempsey Shire Council. Um, today we're here to just discuss briefly this plant beside me, which is called tropical soda apple, or commonly referred to as TSA. The TSA reduces biodiversity by uh, dis displacing native plants and disrupting ecological processes. Most of this plant is unpalatable to livestock, however they can get in and eat the fruit. The plant, if not controlled, a few of these plants can turn into a hectare size thicket in about six months. Uh, TSA reproduces via seed and um, can also regrow from stem and root fragments. Each, um, each fruit can contain 400 to 450 seeds and uh, each plant is capable of producing about 45,000 seeds. Fruit are sweet, cattle smell them and seek them out so they will eat the fruit and the seeds will remain viable inside their gut for up to six days. So that's one of the main ways it gets transported around. And Seed is also moved when the fruit floats in water uh, and that results in infestations along our waterways and particularly in our flood zones. After any flood event, um, the potential spread of TSA is always a concern for us. Um, following floods, landholders are strongly encouraged to keep an eye out, uh, especially in areas where the plant hasn't been before and particularly in areas where there's been slower moving water and the fruit's had a chance to um, to settle down into the mud. Good. Uh, soda apple is a shrub. It can grow up to around two metres tall. Um, it's got quite a distinctive leaf shape. As you can see here, it's got some really nasty pale thorns or spikes um, that grows pretty much over the entire plant. So there's no plant, no area is really safe to touch. It grows little white flowers with five petals on them and then starts the fruit. If you can see under here, immature fruit, a pale green with a white mottling and look um, kind of like a miniature watermelon. And then as the fruit ripens, it will go to a bright yellow colour and they grow up to around the size of a golf ball. Uh, particularly after floods, it's really important that any new infestations are reported and uh, initial control works are undertaken before any plants have a chance to fruit. Um, plants can be either physically removed or they can be sprayed with an appropriate herbicide. Once the initial control is done, um, an appropriate management plan should be put in place for ongoing inspection and control purposes. Hi, I'm Shane Landrigan, uh, Weeds Biosecurity Officer with Clarence Valley Council. Today I just wanted to go through uh, one of the aquatic weeds we have here in Clarence Valley Council uh, and the North Coast, uh, common aquatic weed, uh, water hyacinth. Uh, this weed can invade uh, a lot of water bodies, uh, rivers, creeks, uh, drainage ditches, dams. Some of the key features of the plant uh, are the uh, rounded, uh, glossy green leaf. Uh, uh, sometimes in, in denser infestations, uh, the leaf the leaf can be a little bit more uh, elongated or oval. Um, the leaf stems have a real uh, inflated leaf stem or, or petiole um, that aid, it, aid in floating. Um, uh, the, flower, the flower of the plant, uh, is, it's usually it's a, a light bluish to purple colour. Uh, the flower usually has six petals. Uh, on the top petal there's usually a yellow spot which is very distinctive. There's a variety of ways to control this weed, uh, hand removal, 
uh, mechanical removal uh, and there are uh, a number of herbicide options available. Uh, for more information, if you want to go to DPI's uh, Weedwise website or download the free Weedwise app, uh, you'll get a bit more detailed information uh, on control. Uh, in terms of aquatic weeds, uh, free floating weeds like this one and others, uh, control is actually uh, the responsibility of landholders. Uh, if, if that water body is on the boundary between two landholders, then uh, they are responsible to the centre line of, of that waterway. Hi, I'm Tess King, Weed Biosecurity Project Officer for Rouse County Council. So today I'm going to be talking to you about frogbit, also known as Amazonian frogbit. This is an aquatic water weed uh, which is easily distributed by flood water. Uh, its key identifying features are its green, bright green, glossy subcircular leaf um, and in its juvenile state, so when it's little, underneath it's got a spongy air-filled sac which helps it to float on the water surface. As it matures, the air sac uh, disappears and it's just flat underneath and the leaf actually grows a bit bigger, about four centimetres in diameter. The flowers for frogbit are small and white uh, and the, the fruit is a berry-like capsule that contains about a hundred seeds and this can be distributed by the water or by wind. So frogbit threatens uh, our native waterways and uh, environment as it causes dense clumping masses across the water surface inhibiting light. So as frogbit is listed as prohibited matter statewide, please don't try and remove this weed yourself. It needs to be dealt with by a weeds professional. Um, contact your local control authority and we can come out and actually do that work for you. So this is giant devil's fig. Uh, it's a really fast growing weed. Uh, it's quite shallow rooted. It can create problems for grazing land um, and it also outcompetes native vegetation. Distinguishable by its large leaves that are deeply lobed and it's got spikes all along the veins, both sides underneath as well. It's a single stemmed tree that can grow up to four metres tall. Uh, and this plant produces small white flowers and little round berries and birds and animals love them. So if you find this weed, um, you can control it by spraying, uh, cut and paint technique, stem injection or hand removal for younger plants. Uh, so behind me we have Job's Tears. So this is a weed that grows in damp areas and loves um, disturbed creek lines, waterways and roadside ditches, things like that. Uh, it grows up to two metres high and can create dense clumping masses which make it really hard to access um, creek lines and, and, and rivers. So it's mostly identifiable by its thin long green leaves which have a light coloured vein through the middle and it looks a lot like corn in its leaf arrangement as it grows. It produces uh, small round hard seeds which float and they um, are easily distributed along riverways. And in eroded creek banks like this, they can just dig in and um, yeah, become a real problem. If you find this weed, please notify your local control authority and we can assist you in removing it professionally. So we've just covered but a few of the many weeds that you're likely to see after a flood. So if you do have plants or weeds coming up that you're concerned about, in the first instance, contact your local weed officer. Your local weed officer can help identify any weeds and give you advice on how to manage weeds on your property, remembering they're there to help. There are other resources such as the WeedWise website and the WeedWise phone app. Weedwise has a lot of weeds, their description and control options. The other thing is, if you have a weed that you're very concerned about, the best thing you can do is to control it as soon as possible. 
before it takes hold and starts to spread. Thank you.